Television also played a big role in selling a key luxury item to the American public, the automobile, and in creating the inherently American car culture. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Spurred by advertising, the car culture was also fueled by a combination of higher wages, greater auto production, inexpensive gasoline, and the construction of interstate highways. By 1955, auto sales accounted for one-fifth of the gross national product. Easy credit meant that four out of five households owned a car by 1960, with most new cars selling between $1,800 and $5,000. Cars had a decidedly aerodynamic look. Huge grills mimicked jet intakes. Giant fins echoed the style of swept back wings. And protruding taillights resembled the red glow of afterburners. Americans flew these eye-catching autos down new highways that looked more like runways than roadways. In 1956, Congress passed the Interstate Highway Act, which allocated $33 billion for 42,000 miles of new road construction. President Eisenhower justified the new highways as an investment in national security. Well, during the Cold War, almost everything the government did was explained in part uh, through a national security rationale. And so the government could talk about needing to finance a new highway system in the mid-50s to increase the ease of transportation and help people get out of the cities if there were a nuclear attack. Likewise, it could be satisfied that people were moving out to the suburbs where they'd be uh, away from where the bombs might fall in the inner city. Service stations sprang up along the superhighways where smiling attendants not only pumped gas, but checked oil, water, and air in the tires. And with gas only 25 cents a gallon, a family could suddenly afford to travel from coast to coast, visiting historic places, ocean beaches, and natural wonders. American treasures such as Yellowstone National Park, the Grand Canyon, and the Redwood Forest were favorite summertime attractions. In 1950, visitors to national parks totaled just over 33 million. By 1960, that number had increased to more than 80 million. And this nation on the move needed to eat and sleep, so fast food restaurants and motor inns cropped up everywhere, ready to serve. In this car culture, however, few people worried about air pollution, the decline of public transit, or the decay of the inner cities. Auto accidents took an alarming number of lives. More people died in car accidents during the 1950s than U.S. soldiers died in World War II. The role of automobiles changed dramatically in the 50s. No longer was a car just a means of transportation. In this new culture, cars provided freedom, conveyed status, and expressed the owner's personality. Americans took to the road in more ways than one in the 1950s, discovering their nation and themselves all over again in the wake of World War II. Superpower politics and American youth ran neck and neck, jockeying for position, as the U.S. of A. bolted full throttle into the even more volatile 1960s.